I'm the administrator at the Dennis Hurley Centre. Um, that means I'm Raymond's right-hand person and I assist all the other managers with their administrative um, tasks. I do uh, reporting to our donors, tax certificates, all those kinds of uh, communications with our donors. My job involves me in getting the bookings of the building, of course the maintaining it and making sure that the building is running as smooth as possible, welcoming people as well. I'm working here at Denise Ali Center as an assistant to the manager. I'm assisting the center manager, John Marie. I'm assisting him by doing the setup for events and, uh, and for meetings. And I'm assisting him in maintaining the building physically. And I, I am a standby driver for our clinic, Kusu Zuletsu Clinic. And I also go and also drive for the center to collect donations and everything that is donated to the center. I'm in charge of security at the Dennis Ellis Center and I make sure that people are safe inside this building and I can take this building, such as doing maintenance in this building, fixing stuff. I'm working here at Dennis Haley just to make sure that the, the environment is clean. We clean all the floors, the rooms inside, there is a hall and the napiers, all the floors must be clean as well as the toilets. In the toilets, we must make sure that there are toilet papers, enough toilet papers, enough paper towel, hand soap. We sanitize everywhere, especially the whole building. I'm the clinic coordinator of the Cesar Reto Clinic at the Dennis Hurley Center. I make sure the clinic is running five days a week. We are here for um, the poor and disempowered of Durban, and we help to enable people to access healthcare services where they may not be able to otherwise. A lot of other people that we see are either homeless or foreign nationals. Um, yeah. I'm working for Usu Zero Two Clinic at the Center. We are more focused on outreach programs, where we go to all the homeless and the substance abusers around around Durban, where we do clinics, uh, counselling, HIV and TB testing. At the Denisel Center, I am supervising the patient who are taking the TB and ARV treatment, helping them to get the change in their lives and accompanying them to hospital, those that are in need. And they're doing our home visits, trying to, to rebuild the relationship with their families. So those people, they are keeping their treatments in our clinic. I do, they come daily. I do give them porridge before they, are, they take their treatment. So my main job is to build a relationship with them, a very nice relationship, because those people, they are, like, they are discriminated from the family or the society. So if they feel comfortable to come to our clinic, uh, I'm very happy. Sometimes it seems like a, I'm a jack of all trades. Um, but basically it is, um, as I'm also a social worker, so I coordinate all our care projects, um, the feeding program and ensuring that um, those who want to give up addiction have the opportunity to be able to do that through the counselling that we offer them. I am a social auxiliary worker in Denise Ali Center since 2018. I'm working with Sister Kathy, a coordinator of Inkosinatsu Project. I'm working with homeless guys who are drug addicts. I mostly prepare them for rehabilitation program, do referrals, clinic referrals, hospital referrals. At times, I do family unifications and also I do follow ups with their families. I have volunteered to be part of the um, Itekweni Municipality Partnership um, Homelessness Task Team at the beginning of COVID when the Dennis Early Centre and other sites were created as a safe sleeping space for people. So that's how I came to the Dennis Early Centre. I'm working in the kitchen. I'm preparing the... I'm starting to prepare the breakfast. Sometimes I prepare the breakfast and lunch and uh, to and after that I cooked, after that I feed them. I'm helping here when to the showers and to the pots, washing the pots, everything. And then about the COVID, I stay here for, for many months. I did similar work with the homeless people in Cape Town and I was looking for an organization that I could I'd help that does amazing work. And whenever I spoke to people in Durban, all I heard was, 
Dennis Hurley, Dennis Hurley, Dennis Hurley, and this amazing work that's done here. So I've come to join the team here of volunteers, and I come once a week and help with preparing food. I am a social auxiliary work student intern. Um, it basically has to do with preparing homeless people for rehabilitation program and helping them reunite with their families. I'm at Dennis Hurley Centre. I'm responsible for the political and economic empowerment program. So that means for me, giving people space and identity in the economy, both their own identity by a form of identity documents, getting them to vote and that sort of stuff, IEC processes. And the economic stuff is to giving them spaces to find where they can be self-sustaining employed people. I run a really fabulous project called Streetlit which enables 15 formerly unemployed men and women to earn a dignified living by selling second-hand books which are donated to us. I enjoy what I'm doing because I, I'm helping the community and especially the homeless people who comes here who have lost hope in life and bring light into their lives and especially uh, our director and the managers who have been supporting to us and who are very generous to us as their staff members. I love that um, firstly administration plays into my strong points. I'm good at the fine details so, so that's enjoyable for me and the staff at the Dennis Hurley Centre are just wonderful to work with. We're, we're, we're diverse and caring of each other. I think I think that's the thing I really love about the Dennis Hurley Centre is, is the work environment that, is, that has been cultivated. For me, it's about making a difference in the lives of people. Um, and I see that uh, through those who have gone through rehab, we start with uh, feeding people, offering them the opportunity to come and get showers so that they can live with dignity. We offer them the meals, we offer them clean clothes, but we also offer them that opportunity to take the next step with their lives through counseling, through the employment program. And for me, it's about seeing that full spectrum of how people come from being down and out and then being able to live with dignity. I do enjoy because I believe in safe and clean environment so that the workers can work nicely, be productive as well. And at home, we always do the cleaning stuff. That's why I enjoy it. I enjoy it, yes. I need to, I don't, I like to see the orphan. They happy, they not hungry. They full all the time. I enjoy doing it because I've also been there. That is why I enjoy it. I enjoy working with the communities that we do because of the people um, within those communities. They are warm, kind and caring individuals who will go above and beyond what you would expect of people in those situations nine times out of ten. And they are, it's very special to get to know them and to get to know their individual stories. I enjoy working with the homeless. It's a, it was a first experience for me when I come in 2016. It was a lovely experience to work with the homeless, uh, to get to know them, uh, because sometimes they've got a, a different pr problems to help them, social problems, uh, medical problems. Learning, mostly learning about the life on the street and the cause, that, what causes people to go out, and mostly about helping someone who's in need, starting them from afresh until they go back home in a sober state. I have the most wonderful, intelligent company. We sit and we discuss the merits of philosophy and our favorite Dickens character. So what could be better? And I'm surrounded by glorious people and books. And I really do feel that what we do does make a difference. And I listen to the testimonies of my fellow vendors and just watch them, how they've changed and grown and how they can afford to do things they couldn't do beforehand because of this project. And I'm feeling really gratified and proud. I am enjoying my job because it's building the change to those homeless people that are experiencing the threats every day in the streets. And uh, also, I do enjoy what I'm doing 
because to reunite them with their families, sometimes it's hard because their families, they do lose the trust to them. Therefore, I do enjoy my job to see their families accepting them back. That is the most part that I am enjoying with my job. I do enjoy that kind of job because those people, they, they need the love. So wherever they are staying, they come to us saying, our tablets, they are not safe. So if they feel like in our place is safe, I do enjoy that. I hope that their lives is going to change. Enjoy working with the people because they're part of my family, because I have got nothing. I, I always believe in helping other people. And I think uh, Swami Shivananda said um, that if you can learn to um, help others first, then you can learn to love. And it's through this, our passion and help for other people, that we actually learn to love unconditionally. So this is why I do it, to obviously help myself and to, to come to understand myself better, because when we really do help others, it really changes our own life as well. I enjoy the work that I do. As a nurse, I am uh, committed to helping people and the job that I currently do is one that I had envisioned myself doing when I started studying. So I am doing my passion. I enjoy doing what I do because I believe in giving out and giving back. I believe that everyone deserves something, even if regardless of what they have or whatever they do. So I believe in giving back. That's the only thing that keeps me pushing. I would really ask people with skills, like for, like for example, we work at a micro level, but there's so much more, like more sort of advocacy and other things we can do to really get to the to get structural change which means that we'll get like real we'll really imp, really impact on poverty and inequality so i think the more people more skilled people we get that can drive um, things like economic system change i think that will really then we'll really get change um, i find being in the city a real buzz and also this is connected with some of the most vulnerable people in the city um, i've been in the city for a long time and so it really just connects me with a, a part that gives me a lot of energy and space. And I love the environment. I love the, the folk. I love connecting with people that are, are real as well. So that's one of the things that gives me my go. This feeds my soul and I'm so blessed and so grateful to be part of this family. Oh, it affected a lot because I was so anxious and uh, the homeless guys, they were so distressed and uh, didn't know, didn't have any explanation about the COVID. So we used to go and help them do the screening with them, test HIV, TB screening with them, and uh, to, calm, to calm them down and explain to them how the COVID is affecting people. My life affected by COVID is for uh, staying at home, doing nothing, thinking of all what's going on on the outside. People dying. That's what affected me the most. Our work was affected because we had to stay in and work uh, as a shelter during COVID-19 lockdown. So that's why we had to have people staying in here inside this building and taking care of people. But it was much easier because we had support from uh, a lot of structures, including the municipality. At the beginning of the COVID lockdown, it was really difficult because I was one of the few staff members working entirely from home. In fact, I'm still working from home all these months later. So I was, you know, I've been removed from the staff and from being with my colleagues, which at times has been has been difficult, but uh, thanks to technology, we do have Zoom uh, to be able to meet with each other virtually. Um, and I think overall, I've just been surviving and maybe even thriving through COVID by you know turning to God to see me through the hard times. At the end of the day, who else do we have when times are really difficult but our God to lean on? Cleaning them and sanitizing the whole process was. A bit difficult for us, but yeah, we tried to uh, to to 
to cope and and move on with, with what we are doing in the center. The the most challenging was when we, uh, as we are presently in level three, where we cannot feed people sit down meals as we did previously, so we have to uh, give them takeaway meals. Uh, we're happy that we've had partnerships with churches that have made sandwiches. And we, as a center, have taken, um, taken up to provide sustainable, to look at the sustainable aspect of the environment. And so the containers that we uh, provide, serve the meals in, are containers that are environmentally friendly. The biggest challenge over COVID is that we are no longer have access to the places where we typically sold beforehand. So typically we would go to galleries and theatre shows and concerts and sell them there. And of course over COVID that is not the case. So a lot of the retail um, uh, platforms are open to us. So we sell at shopping centres, we sell around town, but our biggest challenge is to find places to sell our books. It's been very bad uh, on one side because uh, we lost a lot of income, uh, we couldn't make money. Part of my work is to make sure that uh, I make bookings, people make bookings of the building. But again, I couldn't get a client to use the building because of fear. However, the positive side was that we could renovate our showers, which were destroyed uh, during the, the operations. So we got a chance to make sure that uh, the showers are renovated. Yes, so COVID the past year has been a massive uh issue in all of our lives, but uh, healthcare wise, it hasn't become the biggest problem that we've had to deal with in the clinic. The other healthcare issues that we see um, normally, TB and HIV, have continued to be our biggest problems. And in fact, we've seen very few COVID positive patients um, within the communities that we work. And the num number of the ones that we did pick up were uh, accidental because they were picked up when referred to hospital for other problems. Yeah, it has been like, as I've said, it, because you have to go an extra mile, try to end up forgetting about yourself, focusing more about other people. And it has affected like me personally very much because I ended up uh, discovering that I, I tested positive, but even without the symptoms. And for me, staying at home without going to work and helping people, it was a challenge, but lucky enough for me, when I tested again, I tested negative, I fully recovered. Not going to lie, it's been difficult and still difficult because uh, we have to, uh, you, you have to make sure that uh, your patient that uh, you are assisting is wearing a mask and yourself. Sometimes if you are telling the patient, will you please put the mask properly? To, to the patient, it's like maybe you do discriminate uh, he or her because of, uh, of the condition he's coming from. And uh, for me, I can say it it's, uh, has uh, affected me uh, in different ways. Coming to work, uh, have, uh, uh, having uh, the, the announcement, maybe someone has passed on in the families or around you, it's really affecting us. It's been a huge opportunity uh, in many ways. Uh, firstly, um, there was no lockdown because we worked consistently throughout the lockdown uh, period because we had over 100 people staying here at the center. So it was ensuring their well-being during that time. Uh, I was part of a team that was asked to lead a shelter for people because I'm alone at home and not uh, of any um, danger to anybody. So I was able to be part of a, a team that led um, a shelter here at the center, which started off with about 150 people and ended up in nearer the end of when we moved everybody out with about 50 or 60 people. Being connected with those guys over that extended period of time was absolute pleasure and privilege, something that we don't often get to do easily in our day-to-day -day work, the extended time of connection. I'm in a lucky position that I can survive and we've managed to survive through this, but. Um, many other people have become even more destitute through this COVID-19 epidemic. So for me, um, we need to help as many people as we can in our society to make our society a better place.